everyone, this is the Smock Bishop Bubble version of the Children's Corner Jamie pattern. Children's Corner has become my favorite pattern brand for children's clothes. I love the style, but also their patterns aren't netted, so you don't have to trace them, and I love that. <laughs> okay, so for this garment, you'll cut out one bubble front on the fold, two sleeves. I went ahead and did the angel sleeves, but you can do smock sleeves if you want, and the bubble back on the fold. On the bottom of the bubble front and back pieces, I clipped where the box pleats go for the crotch area, and I'll use these clips to line up the pleats later on. You'll also need to cut out some bias strips. These will be used for the neckline as well as the underarm area. If you cut out smock sleeves instead of the angel sleeves, that I cut out, you can go ahead and pleat them now, and make sure to pull out enough pleating thread so you can flatten your sleeve out. Then, regardless of the sleeve type you cut out, you'll need to finish the raw edge, and you can do that by either turning up the edge twice and sewing that in place, or you can attach a strip of bias band and sew that in place, or you can attach some lace to the raw edge as I decided to do. And I have a detailed video that shows how to attach flat lace to flat fabric that I'll link below. So when you're done with your chosen sleeve treatment, you can attach your front and back pieces to the, your sleeve pieces. And I started with the front piece and I attached the sleeves using tiny French seams. I also have a video on how to do French seams that I'll link below. And it's important to make sure that the seams are tiny since they're going to be going through a pleater to be small. I guess you could pleat by dots, which now I have a video tutorial on that I'll link below, but I'd rather smock a bishop on a pleater. I don't know about you, but uh, you do you. So the finished seams will be about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch wide. They're tiny. And when everything is connected, you'll have the front and back pieces separated by the sleeves. So you'll have one big loop, if you will. And that's because both the front and back sections were cut on the fold. And this is going to eliminate that seam that's traditionally done on the back of a bishop. It's kind of cool. But this means you'll have to cut down the back to create a placket. So I cut about six inches down the middle of the back and notice I have an iron mark where the fabric was folded when I cut my pattern pieces out. So I just cut down this iron mark and call that center and it's accurate enough for me. Then the fun part came. So I prefer to roll my fabric up on a dowel since I find it easier to feed it through the pleater. But my golly, Miss Molly, I could not do this for the life of me. I tried several times, and I even got the instructions, which is rare for me. The pattern has a little disclaimer where it explains how to roll up on a dowel, but basically then it says, note, garment may be pleated without using a dowel if desired, <laughs> which in my mind was kind of their way of saying, yeah, this may not work out for you. Just roll without a dowel. <laughs> So I gave up and fed it through without a dowel. Honestly, it wasn't as horrible as what I was thinking. I spent about 10 minutes feeding it through and the results were fine. So I just gave myself a cookie and I moved on with life. <laughs> Now onto blocking the bishop. I blocked this in the same manner as most bishops using my blocking board and I'll link where I bought that below. If you're new to bishops and not ready to invest in a board yet, you could use the provided spacing in the pattern to block the bishop instead. And what I would do is I would transfer the markings onto a scrap piece of fabric and pin that to your ironing board. Then you can pin and block your bishop on top of the scrap piece of fabric without worrying about ripping your tissue paper pattern piece, if all that makes sense. So I start by pinning the back plastic areas then I match the sleeve seams in the center front and I've found that I like using the second line of the blocking board now that Audrey is a little bit older and I know the sizing says from zero to I think nine months on that first line but I've discovered that uh, really that second line is better it just is a little bit more comfy and gives it a little bit more you know wiggle room so I continue to pin and pull the threads taut I just pin and pull the threads taut and keep repeating that process until I had the bishop laying flat and I tie the threads off in groups of twos or threes. So for the placket, I cut a perpendicular cut to both the left and right. I mentioned earlier that I cut down the middle of that back. So then I cut to the left of that big cut down the middle and then to the right and both of these were perpendicular to the main cut. I sort of forgot to videotape this and I'm really sorry. The left was about five eighths of an inch and the right was about a quarter of an inch. And then I ran a zigzag on the both raw edges going down the back. I also zigzagged the bottom of the placket once I had the right side over the left as it was gonna be worn. 
Then I took a bias band and folded it in half lengthwise. I gave it an ironing and set it aside. And I lengthened my stitch length to about a four or so and stitch on top of that first holding row. And once you're done stitching, you'll be able to adjust the pleats a little bit due to that longer stitch length. So if the pleats need redistributing, you'll have a little bit of playing room. Then I took that folded bias band and sewed it right sides together with the neckline. I sewed it with the dress on top of the band so I could see and follow those previous stitches. Once that was done, you can trim up the raw edge, and the goal here, at least in my mind, is to trim it just enough so you can fold that bias band over and to have the finished folded edge meet the stitches. It's not a huge deal if the band goes a little bit past the stitches, like I said, it's just a goal, but I think it's pretty clever to be able to hand sew the band down using those stitches. But if you have to use the pleats instead, that's okay, life will somehow go on. So then I joined the side seams using French seams, and these are bigger French seams than the previous ones, say about a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch or whatever. Now we are on the home stretch of finishing up that crotch area, and to begin this, I took the sew line pencil, which honestly I wouldn't recommend, it's not my favorite, but not too happy with the result. But anyway, I used it to mark two inches up on the outside clip mark of each of the pleats. So basically each box plate has three clip marks, so left, middle, and right. And so I'm marking on either the left or the right clip, it really doesn't matter which one, just not the middle. Then I fold the pleat together, matching up the outside clip so that the middle clip is in the middle of the fold. And I use my pencil mark to know where to sew. I hope all that makes sense. Once sewn, you can use your finger to open up the pleat and then iron them down. Then you can turn that raw edge up and sew it in place. After repeating this process to the other side of the crotch, you are ready to make the casing. I did this by turning up the raw edge about a quarter of an inch, ironing that from one crotch area to the other. Then I folded the edge up again about three eighths of an inch and ironed that in place. And I fold the fabric so it makes a nice corner as I'm showing. So then I'll take it to my machine and sew that in place, leaving the ends open. Then I cut two pieces of elastic, and you can measure the child you're making this belt before, or you can use the chart given in the pattern to determine how long to cut the elastic. I like to put the elastic on a safety pin and use the safety pin to push it through the casing. And I'm careful to notice that when the end of the elastic gets close to the end of the casing, and I sew this with about a quarter of an inch of the elastic sticking out. That way the elastic doesn't get pulled through those stitches after some wear and tear. You know, from those cute wiggly giggly babies. And I continue to push the elastic through to the other end and again sew that in place. Now to finish the dreaded armhole. <sighs> this is not my favorite thing to do, but come on, pour yourself a glass of wine and let's get through this together. So I take a piece of bias strip, the width is two inches wide and the length is going to vary depending on the size that you're making. I made the six month size and I cut my band to about five inches or so. I turn up and iron the ends about a quarter of an inch and then I fold the band in half lengthwise and iron that in place. Then it's time to match up the raw edges of the bias band with the raw edges of the sleeve. Take a sip of wine and sew this in place. And actually this step can be a pain in the butt but it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be. Just be patient and adjust your fabric as you go. Just go a little bit of time, maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch, adjust, quarter of an inch, half of an inch. It's only a few inches long. You will get through it. <laughs> and there you have it. From there, it's a matter of hand sewing those armbands as well as neck band in place. And I chose to close the back placket using a hand sewn snap. And then I put snaps in the crotch closure using the snap setter. And if you haven't noticed, snaps are my favorite at this age. And I have a video on how to use the snap center that I will link below. And once you finish your desired smocking and or embroidery design, then you'll have a finished bishop bubble without a seam down the back. And here's my five month old Audrey in a six month size. She's around 14 pounds now and has a shoulder to crotch length of about 16 inches, including a diaper. And the bubble fits pretty well. So I'm thinking it's a pretty good sizing. I also made another version and it's kind of a blingy version with the idea that she can wear this for New Year's. The fabric is a silk cotton batiste blend and I'll link it below. I used hand quilting thread to do the smocking on this one. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.